Ryan Steve at QA1. So you've got coilovers on your car, maybe they're not riding so hot. There are three things that we want to look at to make a determination on what the problem might be. That's what we're going to talk about today. So you've got a car that's not riding that well with your coilovers. Maybe you just purchased this car and it's got unknown coilovers on it. That's a typical one. But there's three things that we need to check when a coilover is not riding correctly. These are important to figure out before you go on to purchase another set of coilovers. The first thing that you'll want to check is your shock length at ride height. Every shock is going to have a recommended length at ride height so that you have sufficient downward as well as upward travel. If you are riding a shock near its full bottomed out point and you keep hitting that during your operational uh, drive, you will definitely feel that and it's not going to ride well. On the other side of things, if you're near the top and your car rebounds and hits that topping out point, we'll call it, that is going to be another situation where that coilover does not ride well at all and that could be the one culprit. What we're looking for is two inches of available downward travel and two inches of upward travel. Now every QA1 shock, if you know the part number of it, has a recommended length at ride, help, at ride height. So we'll go under the car and we will measure center to center at the eyelets and that will be your length at ride height. Compare that with the part number that you have and there you have it. Now if you have a set of coilovers that you don't know what the part number is, they're not QA1, you're not sure what they are, that one you'll want to go under the car, measure your ride height so you know where you're sitting, this is with the car or truck on the ground, and then you'll take one of them off. Now that you've got your length at ride height, you can fully compress that shock and take your measurement, and then fully extend it. Just looking at the math will tell you how much compression and rebound travel you have before that shock is at fully bottomed out or fully topped out. That's the first one and it's a big one. I'll get a customer that calls on the phone and says, I don't know what these shocks are but they're not riding well and I took them off and they're 10 inches compressed and 14 extended. What do you have? And I say, no, 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 no. That's not the way to go about that because I don't know that your car isn't riding at 11 inches and your whole problem was you didn't have enough travel in that shock. So definitely measure your shock length at ride height or figure out what you need it to be and then compare it to the shock that you have and figure out if you've got enough travel in the shock. So once you have the length of the shock calculated and figured out that you have enough travel, you're going to want to move on to your spring rate. Spring rate is another one that can get you with rough riding coilovers. And what we're basically looking to do is have 25 to 30 percent of your spring be compressed with just the weight of the vehicle. That's on a street car is 25 to 30, about 30 to 35 on a drag car. So if you're using a 12 inch spring, that 30 percent is a different amount of spring than you if you're using a 10 inch spring. So it's really important for you to know what your spring's free length is and before you take it off of the car, Measure the height of that spring with just the weight of the car sitting on it, down on the ground, everything good to go. You pull that spring off, if you are fortunate enough to know what spring rate you're using, then you can just do the calculation and it's an easy fix to figure out if you do need a different spring rate. But a, a basic checking of the spring rate is 25 to 30 percent of the spring's free length for a street car. So the third item on our list is going to be the shock valving itself. We've got our shock length in check, our spring rate looks okay. The next item on our coilovers riding bad list would be the shock valving adjustment. This could be a matter of the shock valving is just turned up too high, which is giving you that rough ride. So we'll want to check that, make sure you know what setting you're on. And if it is on the firmer side, you can turn it back to the soft side. There's nothing that says you can't ride our QA1 shocks on the full soft setting. So you could turn it back to the full soft and see how the ride is from there. So if you have any questions about your setup or found the issue and you want to talk about QA1 coilovers for your ride, give us a call at the tech line. You can also find all of our products on QA1.net and thanks for watching.